Hey everybody, last time we got together we made a rustic looking sign for a good friend of mine, Ed Hamilton. He was interested in a sign uh, that he could hang up, hang up in his pool room uh, so that he and his buddies would have something to jaw about whenever they came over to shoot pool. Um, so this week we're going to make another sign. It's uh, going to be much easier uh, for a couple of reasons because number one, it's not as big and it doesn't have as many words, um, so it's going to be faster to carve. But number two, we're not going for the rustic look uh, on this sign. We're, we don't have to worry about trying to preserve that aged patina on the reclaimed cedar wood. Uh, we're just going to go with the look that we get after we sand the boards uh, for the finished product. So uh, we don't have to take all of that care when removing the stencil. So that part's going to go much faster. So let's get to it. So we've already used Microsoft Publisher to make our stencil. We'll see that just a little bit later. We know the size of the panel that we need. So we've got three pieces of cedar here, two pieces that are about um, half inch by six inches wide, and then one board uh, that had a split in it, uh, but I didn't need the full width anyway, so I just took it to the table saw and ripped it. And so we're going to do the glue ups uh, to create our panel. So one bead of glue should do it uh, to give us plenty of uh, glue contact and, uh, and squeeze out when we apply clamping pressure. Lay down this first board, sorry about my arm being in the way. And lay down the second board. And for those of you who have been wondering, put just a skosh of pressure to kind of get them to kiss up to one another and we will apply the call. That's what that is. I don't know if, how many of you kind of recognize that for what it was, but it is a uh, it's a clamping call uh, we used to ensure that the panel uh, remains flat as we apply the clamping pressure. So it's pretty simple. Like fender washers and we'll put the nuts on in just a bit. But um, pretty simple construction. It's just made out of a two before, cut into four equal lengths and uh, then holes are drilled in. Um, and then that shiny material that you might be able to see uh, from the reflection of the lighting, uh, that is packing tape. Um, the purpose of covering the board with packing tape is so that the call doesn't stick there. You can see it really well right there. So that the call doesn't stick to the panel when the glue dries, when the glue uh, cures up. So, um, so we're putting the nuts on now. The reason that these bolts are as long as they are is that I usually, typically I use these calls um, when making ingrain cutting boards. And so they are, they're a little bit longer than I need for this particular endeavor. Maybe, maybe I should get some shorter bolts. Thank goodness, just one more to go. All right, we've got all four of the bolts on there. Time to tighten it down. The two nuts that are furthest from me, I'm giving them a little bit of extra uh, twist before putting the ratchet to it because I want for the uh, boards to be slightly out of parallel so that I can bring them back into parallel whenever I apply this pressure with the, uh, the ratchet wrench. So not too much just yet though, just enough to know that we've got a good snug fit because we still have to put our uh, pipe clamps on. So we'll get our pipe clamp and test it for width. And then we will put this one underneath. We like to alternate the pipe clamps. Uh, and so for this panel, it'll be one on the bottom and two on the top, just so that we get equal clamping pressure. It doesn't cause the, the uh, panel to bow in the middle. Not too, too much clamping pressure though, just enough to make it snug. Uh, plus this is cedar, so it's kind of soft. If you put too much clamping pressure on it, you'll, you'll dent the sides of the, uh, of 
the cedar slat. It's just fence material. Nothing too terribly expensive. I think they're $2 a slat, so you can make uh, signs fairly inexpensively using the cedar wood. Now we'll get the uh, ratchet and crank down on that just a little bit more to ensure that we've got a good flat panel. Check for squeeze out, and I can see we've got it on top and on bottom. Give you guys a chance to see it. Good squeeze out on the top and some good squeeze out on the bottom, as evidenced by the glue that's on my workbench. Whenever I redo my workbench top, I'm definitely going to have to lay down some butcher paper, but let that uh, sleep overnight, and we will check it in the morning. Good night, shop. See you tomorrow. So the stencil program that I used, Microsoft Publisher, uh, when you do the tiled print, there's always some overlap. Um, and then you've got the margins that you have to cut away. So got the um, threw down some architectural uh, plywood and uh, got out my drafting tools. And uh, now I'm just doing a little bit of peekaboo to make sure that it's the right size. And it is, that everything is lined up just the way we want it. And then we uh, take it to the scissors, cut away that margin. After having done that, we turn our attention to our panel. It's had all night to uh, cure. The glue's all dried up and the panel should be ready for duty. So take off the pipe clamps. Remove the calls. And removing those calls, obviously, as you recall, involves removing those very long bolted screws, but we're speeding it up a little bit this time so it doesn't quite seem like grass growing. Number three. Sounds like someone's doing yard work in the background. You can hear a leaf blower. Number four. All right, got that done. Pop the boards off. And it's time to scrape the glue. We need to, uh, I'm gonna put the boards of the calls underneath so we've got a good flat surface on which to scrape this glue off of. There's still some wet glue underneath on the bottom side of the panel, so I didn't want to lay it flat on my uh, workbench, so... After scraping off all of the glue, we're going to take down the high parts of the uh, panel with the plane. That sounds like I'm going against the grain there. Yeah, need to turn that panel around. That's much better. So after we've taken down all of the high areas, it is going to be incumbent upon us to really flatten out the uh, the panel. It's just a bit too wide for my thickness planer, and so I get to do it by hand. So after we've gotten the panel nice and flat, it's time to apply the glue. We gotta make sure that the panel is very, very flat to ensure that we get good contact with the stencil, but more importantly, so that the router uh, will drive very smoothly over the panel when we are cutting out the letters of the sign. So I'm speeding this up just a bit, spreading out the glue so that we can affix the stencil to it. And with the stencil firmly attached, we're ready to start routing. We're going to use a 90 degree V groove bit. We'll stick that in our router and get ready to go to work. Using a couple of uh, old placemats, 
guys, I do not recommend that you go into your wife's kitchen and take out her placemats in order for you to have an anti-skid platform for your woodworking. These are old and I uh, have permission to use them. So we've got the uh, depth set for our router and we're ready to start cutting. Just careful to take our time. We're tracing around the outline of the letters. After we finish the L, we're going to speed things up just a bit so that we can see the entire top line being carved into the sign. Routing the letters, I like to uh, draw the router toward me. It just makes for better vision. You can see the curves a little bit better, especially the straightaways. But I'll reset the router and bring it back to me so that I can see what I'm cutting just a little bit better. This sign is from my good friend Gabe Preces. Presas to use the ethnic pronunciation. Very close and dear friend of mine that I've known for, gosh, 10 or more years. We got to know each other uh, through the Houston Arrows. I used to do some public address announcing for the Arrows, Houston Arrows hockey team before they left town. And um, Gabe was their director of game day operations. So he was my boss. And uh, we became very close friends and have remained in contact even after the arrows have uh, gone to Des Moines, Iowa, I think it is. So we're friends on Facebook and he had seen some of my woodworking and has uh, inquired about ingrain cutting boards and uh, most recently about uh, me making a sign for him. So that's what we're up to today. Oop. A little blow out there on the stencil. It's okay. Stayed on there just long enough. A and then the S. And the apostrophe is a little bit shy, so we're going to carve that one just outside of the camera shot. And there we go. Los presas. Bienvenidos. Got the makings of a nice looking sign so far. So to dress things up just a little bit, we uh, decided to uh, draw on some borders and uh, we wanted to curve the corners of the, of the sign. So we just used the cap to a spice jar. So now we're ready to carve the border. Starting with the curve and then drawing the router toward me. Now we're going to speed it up just a little bit so that we can get through the whole border in double time, actually triple time. The key here is just take your time, but this is where it's critically important that that panel be flat, and that's where that planing really, really does come into play. Notice I'm using my little finger to kind of guide against the outer edge of the uh, panel on those straightaways. Here, my uh, left hand, but you're viewing to the right, just a little too far away from the panel. But as we come around this corner, I think you'll see that I'll hold the router at a slight angle so that I can drag my little finger along the edge 
and that helps with the straightaways. Let's keep the router and get, you could put together a jig to cut a very, very straight line, but to me, freehanding it is, gives it a little more personalized touch. So now that we've got our panel all routed up, time to cut it to size. Got all the PPE on here. Got the dust mask, eye protection, and ear protection. Because there's nothing quiet about a table saw. Do the cross cuts now. We've gotten both of those rips taken care of. Using the miter gauge for the uh, cross cuts on the line that we drew onto the stencil with our drafting tools. Now that we've gotten all that taken care of, we're going to take off all four of the corners. We're only going to show you one of them, but we're just shaving off part of the corner so that we can then come to the disc sander and uh, sand that corner profile down to the uh, to the line that we drew onto the stencil. Just take your time here, get it up close to the line. You don't have to get right up on it, because we're going to finish the rest of it by hand. So we'll plop the sign down into our bench vise. Get our sanding block. And go to town. trying to smooth things up a bit. Kind of round over those corners just a little bit more. Got to make them uniform. Now that we've got all of our sanding done, we're going to round over those edges, starting with the bottom. We'll do this at our router table. So we'll do a quarter inch round over bit on the bottom and then we'll do the same thing on the top. Well, we are fast approaching the final steps here getting some color on the border. We start with uh, the sign. Stencil side down, obviously. I'm gonna speed things up just a little bit here, but make sure we get good coverage on the entire border. We still have the stencil completely on the sign because that's gonna help to uh, keep our ink off of some of that, the facing of the sign. Sure we want to get good coverage inside of all the letters. So after we finish in that direction, we're going to flip the sign around so that we make sure that we got really, really good coverage. That's the important thing here. And after we've gotten all of that ink on there, time to take some of it right back off. So for that, we use our belt sander. At least 20, probably 25%, depending on what you're making. The 25% of any woodworking project is sanding, and certainly the case is no different with sign making. So we started out, we started up to sanding off the back part of the sign, and now we flip it over and we're working on the front side, and you can see we're belt sanding the stencil off as we go. We can see the little particles of paper being strewn about. And after we finish with the belt sander, we move to the random orbit sander. We're working our way up. The uh, belt sander is a 60 grit. Random orbit sander, we go up to 120, 220. I think we took it all the way up to 400 grit. And there's our final product. Los Presas. Bienvenidos.
think it turned out pretty well. Thanks for watching.